Welcome back to Good Day. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and sometimes we just don't feel quite right. We have people around us, but there's something missing. Sarah Barron of the Thomas M. Warner Center joins us this morning with some ideas on dealing with loneliness. Good morning. Thanks Good for morning. joining us today. Thank you. So first, let's talk about some of the causes of loneliness. Yeah, so there can be a variety of causes. I think we've all experienced this to an extent thanks to the pandemic that we've just recently come out of. Um, so we, we really experience loneliness in a different way way, um, but it brought light to other other ways that we might have experienced it before then, but didn't really realize. So with loneliness, it can be a separation from other people. So I mean, that's kind of what you naturally think of, but loneliness can also be feeling isolated emotionally as well. So you can still be in like a crowd of people and feel lonely. And so I think that's a really, a really great thing to talk about uh, when we're thinking about, about mental health with coming to end of Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, um, because loneliness is something that a lot of people feel, but others might not realize it because they might seem like they're surrounded by people. They might be surrounded mm -hmm. by family and still feel very lonely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Surgeon General has mentioned that loneliness, um, it's, a, it's a health crisis, Ooh. a public health mm -hmm. crisis, mm -hmm. uh, similar to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And we understand the health risks when it comes to uh, the use of tobacco, mm -hmm. but what are some of the health risks when it comes to loneliness? Yeah, so if you're, if you're feeling a lonely, lonely, there are, those physical physical health things that can be happening. You're a higher risk of stroke, um, higher risk of any cardiovascular incident, so like a heart attack, um, uh, memory loss, so like Alzheimer's. It's been yeah. um, it's been connected to the development um, and progression of Alzheimer's disease. Um, you can look at depression and suicide are very um, obvious risks mm -hmm. for loneliness. Um, looking at substance abuse as well, uh, your concentration might struggle. You might have trouble making decisions. Uh, so it can affect so much more than what we initially would have thought. Hmm, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we obviously want to prevent it to begin with. So what are some of the tools in that in that toolbox there? Yeah, so I feel like prevention is kind of a hard thing to talk about with loneliness because you're feeling alone, but you're like, what do I do? You know, because because you think, oh, just talk to people. Maybe that'll help. But really that emotional connection, I think is kind of going to be the key for preventing that loneliness. So finding those people that you connect with emotionally. Um, so this might be uh, doing out doing activities with a loved one with your family um, if you're like me and you live alone figuring out a way to to get out of the house and to find that socialization somehow and this um, this could be doing volunteer events this could be um, going to the metro parks uh, finding free classes I know there's a lot of places you can find free classes around Lucas County um, so for me I'm an animal lover so even um, if like human interaction is something that you struggle with especially post pandemic there's mm -hmm. there's a fear there with being around people sure. now um, so so even being around animals or just doing something that you love can help with that loneliness as well. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So uh, for those folks uh, who are they're, they're dealing uh, with loneliness, they really don't know how to take that next step because maybe uh, that social anxiety of dealing with others uh, is something that's real and it's weighing heavy on them. What are some of the resources that are out there that can that can assist them? Yeah, so you bring up a good point, and do I want to acknowledge that it's really scary? You know, when you're feeling alone and not knowing what to do. Um, so the Thomas M. Warner Center is one is one option. So that's where I work. Um, we're a peer-led mental health recovery center. Uh, so it's somewhere that people can come to, to kind of be around like-minded individuals. So that's a really great way um, to, to start reaching out. And it's one thing we get a lot of folks come through our door like, I'm scared to be here. I'm feeling very oh, wow. anxious. And so that's something that we know to kind of, we can help. We can see, well, what's your comfort level and how can we start being around other people? Um, so that's one resource. Even just using the free resources that we have that might not not necessarily be connected to mental health around here so going to the, the art museum um, you know and even just going around and being in the presence of people um, you still might feel that loneliness but it still kind of gets you around others and can can be a good first step um, going to the metro parks it's beautiful outside um, so getting out to the metro parks and just being near people can sometimes be a really good first step yeah. you know I think um, you mentioned some of the health risks and one of them is Alzheimer's but you know I think of um, older folks in general who might be in uh, assisted care facilities, things like that. So um, maybe we have that loved one in our lives that we're a little bit, you know, worried about. Uh, how 
what can we do to maybe help those folks? Yeah, so for our, our aging population, that, that is a big one, you know, especially as you're leaving work, everything is changing, everything in your life is changing. So making time to, to, um, to really spend time with, with your loved ones who might be in assisted living. Um, if you have somebody who's living at home, getting them connected to a senior center. Um, Area Office on Aging is a really great resource to help find uh, socialization opportunities, um, especially with our aging population. They don't know technology as well either mm -hmm. so I'm um, saying like hey get on Facebook get on you know Twitter Instagram whatever like that's that. that's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna work very well yeah. um, so helping them get connected to to some of the local agencies around here some of the senior centers put on some really great activities yeah, they do yeah they do uh, and so make sure that you help them get mm -hmm. connected as well if you've got some um, older folks in, exactly. your, in your family well great uh, information this morning once again Sarah thank you so much for joining us yeah, today. thank you for having me. Yep.